first of all, let's have a look at this perpetual chronograph. So we're going to start by just winding this up. And this is a hand wind. So it's got the Seagull ST19 movement. It's not automatic, it's just hand wind. So I'm just winding that up. And you can see the sub dial on the left is a small second and that's just starting to move now. So you can turn this until it just puts up a bit of resistance and then you need to stop because unlike an automatic, you know, you could damage that movement. That's a nice big crown, really easy to turn. And you can see that moving now. Let me just catch that in the light. You can just see that those hands, that small second hand, the chronograph hand on the right on the other sub dial and the hand, uh, the big hand here, which is the second hand for the chronograph. And this is the dial on the right is the mini hand for the chronograph. You can see that's now, second hand is now moving. So they've started that. And then we could set that time by pulling that out. Could be a little bit tricky in the gloves. There we go. And you can see you can set the, the hands. Um, it's not hacking. So as you can see, the second hand is still moving. I think you can probably maybe black, back play that a little bit just to stop that second hand. But it's not quite so easy to, to set it at the accuracy on that one. So we push that one in and there we go. And because we've done that now, we can actually start the chronograph. So we've powered the watch up. So let's just push the top. So that's the, the top pusher. We'll start that chronograph and you can see that when we start that, the second hand is moving around a nice sweep, nice automatic movement. So it's a column wheel chronograph movement. And you can see that and that'll go around and just get a nice flick from into the minute hand as that goes round. So as that's going round, let's have a look. So the case is nice stainless steel, nice polish. It's polished all over. And I, I just use Cape Cod to keep that all nice and shiny. That is really nice. There we go. So you can just see those, both those small second hand and the chronograph second hand now moving round. And you could just watch that minute hand move when that goes up to the top. And there it is. And that's one minute. Okay, so let that go a little bit further. And we just see that that move back. So I'm just going to stop that again with that top pusher and that is now stopped. So you could start that again and that will carry on its count. Stop that again and to reset it is that bottom pusher. So we push that and it will just snap straight back. And there we go. And that's, that's the one thing that's nice about the automatic is that snapping back and you can see the movement through the back, beautiful. It's the Seagull SD19 and you can just see that. And if I just press the chronograph again, you can see that flick across, stop the chronograph and reset that. And there you go. That's really nice to look at. So let's, uh, Let's get some measurements. So if I just get the my digital calipers, switch that on, should be able to get some measurements. So I think the case is roughly about 38 millimeters diameter. So let's have a let's have a look at that. So oh so it's more like about 40 millimeters. So just under 40 millimeters, 39 and a half millimeters. It's quite a good size. The Thickness is just over 13 millimeters. Just, yeah, just should I get, oh, that's, sorry, about 13, 13 and a half millimeters. And you can see that 
that that's domed look. So the glass is domed and you can, you can just see the gaps at each, each edge on that one. So that sort of does add a bit of thickness to that. And then the, the lug length, which quite often dictates how that wears on the rest is 48 millimeters. And the strap thickness is 20, but I'll just show you that. And there we go, so that's 20 millimeters on the strap. I was just gonna show you what that looks like on the rest. So let me just take that glove off and let's just pop that one on the rest. And there you can see that one on the rest. So that's the way I tend to wear that one. Um, I think that always looks quite good with my brown suede leather jacket and it looks quite good with sort of, the, you know, denim shirt or even a smarter shirt. Um, tend to wear that sort of casual smart more than anything else. That one's still going nicely. Okay, so let's just put that back off the rest. Okay, so just really want to now talk about the price and look at advantages and disadvantages of the watch and my just overall opinions of that. So just been on the website and the price is currently 360 um, US dollars, um, which is roughly about 275 pounds. So t it is a good price and, and they have got different options. You can get, get the silver, Instead of gold, gold hands. I think the the numbers are uh, also in silver, and you get different variations of this watch and and, and various of, uh, different watches. So well worth looking at the perpetual website for that. The um, I actually was very lucky because I bought this second hand, um, and it, it, I, you know it was fairly new and it was in excellent condition. So it really was as good as new. Um, I got this for eighty nine pound which um, was really good. And to be honest, if you think about it, it's a, you know, a, a column wheel chronograph. And I think if you sort of go for some of the um, you know, expensive chronographs, you need generally looking at least maybe a thousand for um, not so well-known makes, or not such big makes. But when, when you're going on to the sort of Amiga, um, some of the bigger brands, I think you're looking at a few thousand pound. And, you're going to be paying much more than eight to nine pound just to service it. So, you know, to be honest, I mean, I've had this probably about eighteen months, and it's it's going really well. I no problems with this one. Um, eventually, you know, if there was, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, pay money to be serviced. I mean, I got it for eight to nine pound, and eventually, if it does start working, then you know, I'll, I'll love to have a look at, um, you know, if someone can fix it at a reasonable price, and if not then you know, it might not be worth paying the cost, but you know, I think that it'd just be good if I get several years out of this um, and might just be lucky, might have it for a long, long time. You know, um, there's no reason why this movement isn't just going to last for a long time. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really good thing. So I think, um, you know, on the plus side, I think it's a, it's a really good watch. You can sort of wear casual smart. Uh, it looks good. It's got a chronograph. I think, you know, obviously the price is a massive advantage. It's, um, the movement's great. I mean, I think the movement looks really good and you can see it through the case back and you get to get most of that. I think the this case back is sapphire crystal um, and the front is not nice dome sapphire crystal. Um, I personally really like the polished case and I think the size sizes are really good. I actually like the, you know, the, the way the lugs are set up with this um, screw arrangement. Um, you certainly don't scratch every, you know, when you, you're changing scraps. And I tend to mainly be changing between this brown and, and the black it came on. Um, I've tried, you know, I don't think this would work so well with NATOs and things like that. I've tried um, Milanese, Milanese mesh on it. Um, and I think a lot of people would, would probably like that one. I'm not, um, personally didn't like it that much on the Milanese mesh, but then I'm not a particularly big fan on, on mesh. Um, Okay, so the other strap I've actually got is this um, this alligator 
um, strap. That's, that's supposed to be genuine alligator. Got it for quite a good price. Got a really nice sort of stitch in. Um, like to call a stitch in. Uh, it's quite thin. I don't. I don't. I'm not saying sure it's the greatest quality. Um, you know, I think I got it at a good price because it is probably quite thin and everything. But I think that looks pretty good. So if again, if I hold that, see the watch, you can see um, that that's the other strap that I do like on that one. Not quite sure how durable or how long that strap will last, but um, you know, I think that, I think that's the the other good one. So that's three two really good straps I've got for for the watch. So these are the three straps that I actually do wear with the watch. On the left is the black alligator patterned leather which actually came with the perpetual you can actually get a genuine uh, alligator leather with the watch as well for about an extra 80 pound the strap that's on the watch at the minute is the dime modal nevada golden brown which i actually arrived when i bought the alpinist second hand um didn't quite work out on the alpinist um so i do it does look really good on this one and the other one that i've um, I actually bought for this watch is the lizard, um, genuine lizard uh, brown strap, which is the one on the right, which uh, I think looks really classy on it. So for a quick recap, the advantage I think of this watch are the price. I paid £89 for it, but it's, it's really cheap off the website as well. The easy to train straps just by using the screw is really good. No strap. No spring bars, no mark in the back of the case, that sort of thing. It's a column wheel chronograph, uh, which has got the nice automatic sweep. The second hand obviously snaps back. Looks really good. The case is polished. It's got the dome sapphire. It's got a really good view of the movement at the back, and that again is sapphire. And I think the size is really good to fit most wrists. Disadvantage, doesn't hack, so not easy to set the time accurately and no date.